Mark 11:24, which I'm sure you've heard a thousand times. It says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye have received them and ye shall have them. So it's important to pray daily, but prayer is not just what we've been taught in the church. It is. It's so much more. It's so much more in depth. So I'm going to try to explain this in a few different ways. So looking at that scripture, whatsoever things you desire. So the question is, what do you desire? What is your chief aim at this stage in your life with what's going on? What is the greatest thing you desire? It can't be general and generic. It's got to be specific. It's got to be specific. You've got to have a target, a name, a bullseye so that you know what you're aiming towards. So, you know, if it's accomplishable, like goals have to be smart, smart goal. Smart stands for specific, measurable, action oriented, realistic and timely. So being specific is key. Uh, most people are wandering generalities rather than meaningful specifics. So I need you to figure out exactly clearly what it is that you want specifically. And I need you to write it down. And I want you to constantly look at it, constantly think at, think about it and constantly speak it like you should turn it into a short little statement about what it is you want. And then once you figure that out, you would write something down, you would turn it into like a, a mantra or a daily confession. And you would say, all of my energies are being directed towards this one chief aim. And then you write down what it is to obtain optimal health, whatever, whatever it is for you, you need to know what it is. So the statement once again is all of my energies are being directed to this one chief aim. And then you fill in the blank and every day you re you recite that all throughout the day you recite that so that your mind is fixated on what it is you desire. So your mind is not wandering back and forth, thinking about this, thinking about that. You got to keep your mind on that thing because someone once said you get in life what you think about most of the time you become what you think about most of the time so whatever it is that you desire whatever your chief aim is you got to think about it and think about it and think about it we we think 50 to 60 thousand thoughts a day but we spend those thoughts thinking many different things if you were able to focus and concentrate your mind on one particular chief aim and you're thinking it all day all night every day that would be powerful you could manifest just by how you focus your attention on your chief aim. So that's number one, determining what you desire in your chief aim, writing that statement down and reciting it and looking at it and meditating on it all the time. Uh, now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is that this scripture really uh, delves into the element of time. I'm going to read it again. Whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Now we can break this up into three uh, aspects of time that which was that is and that which will be past present future I'll read it again whatsoever things that ye desire when ye pray that's present tense believe that ye have received them received is past tense so you're believing that not not that you receive it presently but that you've already received it past that's past tense and ye shall have them. So the shall implies future. It hasn't happened yet. Right. So that's past, present and future. Now, this is consistent with the other scripture that says he calleth those things that be not as though they were. That also deals with past, present and future. He calleth presently those things that be not future as though they were past. You see that? That's powerful. So we have to understand that with God, time is everything. Now he lives in the eternal. He lives in the place where there is no time. And as long as we're in physical bodies, then we're subject to time. But now with a greater understanding of time, 
you can realize that you can operate in all three realms, past, present, and future. We talked about that before with how we think. If you're thinking in your past, that creates a lot of uh, a resentment, unforgiveness, all types of things. If you're always stuck in your past, in your mind. If you're negative about your situation and you're always thinking about your future, now that's where all of your fear and anxiety of and uh, uh, unfulfilled um, future expectation may be right so the way that you think and the way that you feel determines how you view the past how you view the future and how you live in the present likewise with this particular scripture and the concepts in, in the elements of time past present and future you have to be intentional so how do you bring about your health well according to this this is a powerful statement you bring your future into your present by acknowledging it as your past so you don't step into your future you're pulling your future you're pulling that future uh end result that you're desiring for into your present by acknowledging it as your past so uh, I, right now the fact is i'm unhealthy but i want to be healthy my health is in my future the more i think about it the more i believe that it's mine i bring i force and pull like think about a tug of war when you're pulling rope towards you you're pulling your future into your present by acknowledging it as your past so that's why you're constantly saying i'm healed and you're believing for your healing you're not believing for it future tense you believe that you're already healed so you're acting as if so i hope that makes sense i don't want to belabor that point the next thing is um it's important that you understand belief now the scripture once again says whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe that you receive them so that's where most of us get tripped up belief well what does that mean it be, it really be, it, it, beliefs aren't based upon facts beliefs have nothing to do with facts if you believe the sky is green, no matter what I tell you, you're convinced it's green. You're convinced. Now, most of our beliefs are shaped by our sensory knowledge, what we can see, what we can hear, what we can touch, what we can smell, what we can feel. Our, all, our whole reality is based upon our senses. So if I if I'm colorblind and I look into the sky and the sky is green, how am I going to convince you otherwise? Because that's what you see. That's your perspective. That's how you interpret it. Right. So if that be the case and if we're limited by our senses and our senses are just a perception of reality, like an ego can look two miles in any direction. How far can you look? Maybe a few hundred feet. You can't see beyond a few hundred feet. So you're limited by what you can see, right? You're limited by it. So if you're limited by what you can see and there's a reality beyond your senses, then you can't rely on your senses to create and shape your belief. Hope that makes sense. So your senses say, I possibly am tired or your senses say, relying on your ears, you received a report from the doctor that said you have such and such. All right. Those are your senses. So now that reinforces what you choose to believe. So if you're constantly saying I have colon cancer, it's metastasized or it is a tumor metastasized to my liver. The more you say it, the more you believe it. What, what does the scripture say? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, hearing and hearing that's repetition. So the more I hear it, because I keep thinking it, the more I hear it because I keep saying it, the more I hear it because I keep telling it, the more I hear it because I keep discussing it, it builds up my faith. So now I have a faith in what it is that I have. So I strongly believe I've made it submit in my mind what I have. Now, what if I was falsely diagnosed? Let's just say that, for example, I was falsely diagnosed with something that they believed that I had, but I don't have it. But I but I've made it so real in my mind that I have it like real talk. Uh, what's the name? Daniela, the, 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 the client who acted like she was connected to Denzel. All of that was fake. None of it was real. 
her mother wasn't real. I thought I was talking to her mother. I thought I was reading letters from Denzel. I mean, uh, all the trips and all the visitations and all the holidays that we were supposed to do, it was so real to me. It was the realest thing ever, but none of it was real. I was deceived. I was given false information. I was given a negative suggestion and I believed it. And guess what? It was real to me. So belief is whatever you choose to believe as your reality. So not relying on your senses, which you can see, touch, smell, feel, and taste, but you should be relying on revelatory knowledge. What's revelatory knowledge? That is um, a belief in something that you can't see, a belief in the invisible. So the key is this, whatever your senses are, are telling you, you have to deny your senses. Your conscious mind has to unbelieve what your senses are trying to convince you of because it's all a lie. It's all a perception. It's all limited in your scope. You only know what your senses allow you to know. But there is also a reality that exists beyond your senses. You've got to step into that reality. Hope that makes sense. So when the scripture says, believe you've received, not receive, present tense, received past tense, that's got to be based upon revelatory, not sensory knowledge, because the fact may be that there's something happening in my body. But guess what? The facts don't matter, because if you have a strong belief that you have received your healing, then you operate according to that belief. So let me make it make sense. There's something called the law of reversibility or the law of inverse transformation. So, so let's look at the scripture again. <laughs> Whatsoever things you desire uh, when ye pray, believe that you've received them and ye shall have them. Okay, so how do you get what you want to have? By believing that you have it by feeling the experience of having it before it comes whatsoever things you desire when ye pray so whatever you have a desire for whatever you're believing you've already received well technically you have it in the spirit but you don't have it in the natural yet so how do you bring it into the natural by operating in the spirit so the law of reversibility let's break that down let me give you an example of the law of reversibility one plus two equals three, but in reverse, three minus two equals one. That's reversibility. Two times four equals eight, but in reverse, eight divided by four equals two. That's really simple. You get that, right? Okay. So if here's the thing, what do you want? You want health. Let's assume that you had a perfect bill of health today right now at this very moment how would that make you feel now most people would say oh i feel great but that's very limiting like i want you to be more specific i want you to be more detailed i want you to be more more graphic if you will how would you actually feel in your mind in your emotions in your body like think about that write it out write a few sentences of, of how you would actually feel. If you had a perfect bill of health, how would you feel? Whatever that is, the law of reversibility says, if, if your expected end result, which is health, would make you feel amazing, exciting, uh, a new lease on life, uh, very positive, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever, whatever that feeling would be, whatever that experience would be, the law of reversibility says whatever state of consciousness it would produce, have that state of consciousness now. So feel happy now, Full, feel optimistic and positive now, not what you're hoping for, but what you know it is. Feel excited now, feel good now, because the law of reversibility says if you feel good now, uh, and that's the state that you would produce if you accomplish your goal, then the inverse, the law of reversibility or inverse transformation also is true. The feeling creates the reality. Said another way, 
if a physical fact can produce a psychological state, then a psychological state can produce a physical fact. So think about when you were a kid and it was Christmas Eve and how excited you were and you were in high anticipation and you knew what you believe was under that tree and you're just like, you can't sleep at night. You're just like, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. There's a high level of expectation. Now you haven't unwrapped anything under that tree yet, but you have experienced unwrapping what's under that tree in your mind, in your emotions, in your dreams. You're just on edge. You can't wait for that day to come. You're excited. You're excited because you know what you asked for is under the tree. So you already have it. It's not in your physical possession, but it's already in your possession because you know that it's yours. Your faith towards your health works the same way. You have to have a high level of excitement and intensity and 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 just joy and expectation of well of what you already have before you actually unwrap the gift underneath the tree which is your health that is the law of reversibility that is the law of inverse transformation so once again if a if a physical fact the gift under the tree can produce a psychological state i'm so full of happiness then a, then a psychological state being happy can produce the physical fact, which is health, which is the gift unwrapped underneath the tree. Does that make sense? So if you can understand these concepts, it will literally change your life. Okay. So the facts don't matter. You have to pay attention to the facts, but you don't operate based upon the facts. You operate based upon your faith. So now, if I believe that I'm healed, now you have to start thinking, well, what what did I do? Even though it hasn't happened yet. What did I do to get my healing in addition to feeling good? What tangible uh, things, what action steps did I take in order to feel good? In order to get my health. You walk that through in your mind. So think about sports psychology. Athletes are told, listen, see yourself running into the end zone. See yourself knocking that ball out of the park. See yourself hitting the putt and go into the hole. Like the more you begin to visualize the end result and the process to get there, you're making it real in your life. You're making it real. And think about it. Athletes who meditate and focus on their mind on what it is that they want, they usually wind up manifesting it. So they're in essence training their subconscious mind and training their physical bodies to experience the experience before they experience it. <laughs> right. So you want to experience in your mind and in your emotions the experience of experience of, of health before you experience it. So in essence, you can train your body, trick your body to believe that it already has the health because you keep looping it in your mind and your memory and in your imagination again and again and again and again and again. So perfect example, there were two groups of people and an experimentation was done. Each group, they were pianists. So for three weeks straight, uh, one group had to actually practice the scales for 10 minutes before their actual practice. The other group had to close their eyes and imagine themselves practicing the scales every single day for three weeks. At the end of the three weeks, they tested both groups in terms of their performance. Their performance was almost identical, almost identical. So the group that was imagining and thinking in their mind, the scales trained their body to believe that the experience already happened, though physically it hadn't happened. And as a result of that process, their level of growth and development on the keys was just as strong as the one who actually physically did it. So while you're in your bed, while your eyes are closed and you're praying and meditating and imagining, you've got to see the surgery going well. You've got to see you on the other side of this situation in full health. There was a guy who was uh, a um, uh, he was in World War II, I believe, and Hitler got to him and he was in the concentration camp and he was tied up and being tortured. And they were literally like torturing this guy, ripping his teeth out, 
peeling the skin off. And so every day they would do this. But the one thing he didn't give him control over was his mind. And so while they had control over his physical body, every time that they began to torture him, his mind began to drift. And he began to think about seeing himself as a professor in a university, teaching a lesson to students while drawing on the board. And he did this every single day like a routine. He blocked out what was physically happening to him because he just he just couldn't do it. He couldn't bear it. This dude should have died. He should have not been a survivor. Well, guess what? The war was over about a year or so later. Guess what this dude was doing? What he had imagined in his mind. He was a professor at a university teaching students writing on a board. He made it so real. He made it so real in his mind that it became a reality. And that's exactly what we can do if we practice, if we practice prayer, if we practice faith. What I've shared with you are the laws of faith and prayer. This is just lesson one. There's a lot more lessons to go. But I want you to listen to this again and again and again and again and again till it makes sense and then begin to do everything that I said. Take notes on this. Write it out. Make it a bullet point. Make it a how to make it a to do list, whatever. But just listen to this again. See, that's the one thing. Repetition is the mother of all learning. So the more you listen to it and the more you listen to it, you'll eventually get it. It'll click and then manifestation comes.